morning. Welcome to each of you. And if you're visiting us in particular, welcome to the Shehala Seventh-day Adventist Church. As the last day of, of October is here and we prepare to fall back this evening, um, it's the changing of the seasons. And we can either think of that as a time where we move into darkness for the next three or four months, or we can think of it as a time where we have holidays where we give thanks for what God has done for us, and we give thanks for sending his son to earth for us. So I invite you this morning as we move into this time of the fall that, that we thank God for that. We have a few announcements this morning. I'd like to invite Cameron to come forward. He's our radio station director, and he has an announcement this morning. Bring you all greetings from the thousands of listeners in Willapa Bay, Grays Harbor, the foothills of the Cascades, and the I-5 corridor, as well as the South Sound, the seven FM signals of the network that you have had a hand in helping to build. This past week was a pretty exciting up and down ride, a roller coaster ride, you might say. It's our annual fundraising week, and we heard from a lot of people. A lot of prayer requests and a lot of exciting stories. I'll take just a minute to tell you one, and then to the business of this. Think of a young man, almost 20 years old, driving a logging truck in a Cascades Mountain logging road. It had been raining pretty heavily. He's driving along that road when suddenly the ground gives way underneath the truck he is driving. He plummets some 45 feet down as the truck turns over on top of him. He called his mom and dad to let him know he had gotten out of the wreckage alive, barely. He had called 911 and called his grandmother because grandmother had always told him, remember, every day I'm praying for you. Jesus promised I will never leave you nor forsake you. He called grandma there from the site of that wreck to say, Grandma, Jesus help me get out of this wreck. He had blood all over, he was losing consciousness. They airlifted him to Harborview Hospital and they cleaned him up, he had a concussion, a mild one, he'll recover, and only a few cuts and bruises. To the, even the medical team said, we have no idea where all this blood has come from, you're going to be fine. And he said the same thing to the medical team as he did to his grandmother on that cell phone call, Jesus got me out of that wreck. That was just one of the calls we received this week. We are very grateful those amongst you who have prayed with us. We did receive 27% of the need during the telethon. We will hope to see more coming in over the weeks ahead. Pray for us. We need to close a gap and a deficit for the budget for next year of $62,000. So keep that in prayer. It is Clergy Appreciation Month, and part of what we do in our annual rally on the phone like that also is have them nominate their favorite clergy. It's so much fun to hear their voices and messages and pass those nominations along to the listening family. We give a fair chance to all of the clergy who are nominated to receive the KACS Clergy Appreciation Award because some churches are smaller, some are bigger, and we want all of them to have an equal chance of their pastor winning the award. We would like to, I, I not quite, there you are. Would you all express the same kind of appreciation we received at the share and welcome your pastor, Enrique, to receive the annual KACS Clergy Appreciation Award this year from the KACS listening family. He was nominated by people here in this congregation and drawn in the drawing at the station. I would also like you to acknowledge and thank our senior pastor, Pastor John Mutchler. He was also nominated. couple of other announcements. Um, one is that in two weeks we have a nutrition seminar. There's a handout in your bulletin, so this is just kind of a heads up to get you started thinking about that. 
you have seen at times on the screen um, slides that describe the, the 31 days of prayer ministries that have been going on through the month, and there's a closing program for that this evening. It's an online program. And so you can tune into the Washington Conference either through their Facebook page or through YouTube, and it will begin um, at 5.30 p.m. this evening. There will be some musical uh, opportunities there for you to enjoy and a closing program for that. So if you'd like to, to tune in about 5.30, either through YouTube or through the conference Facebook page, you can make that connection as the final program for that, that series. I want to uh, also encourage all of you and thank you for, um, for wearing masks around each other. Um, you know, over the next few months, it's going to be a bit of a challenge for us. Um, it looks like the coronavirus isn't going away in the short term. And yet our goal is to worship together with each other. And by wearing our masks together as we come together, it, you know, it allows those who feel vulnerable to come and worship with us. And so I just want to thank you for, for wearing your mask and encourage you that when you can't be separated from people, uh, wear your mask and, and thank you for doing that. As we have our call to worship this morning, we kind of change our, our, our mindset here toward worship. I might want you to stand with me and we'll read some verses from the Bible. You know, one of the things I've really missed during this pandemic is our ability to sing together. Um, and one day I hope we can do that again before too long, but we can read God's word and, we, and those words still encourage us. So this morning I'm reading from Psalms chapter 28, uh, verse six to the end of the chapter. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people, and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also, and bear them up forever. May God bless the reading of his word. Please be seated. Now this is the time for the children's story, and I have a very special story to share. I think we have to mute the middle one. My eldest daughter, one of the things I really appreciated about her was she always thought whatever I said was great when she was younger. Faith, she wanted to tell me her secrets. When she got a new gift, she wanted to show me first. You know, I like to tease Veronica, you know, that I was her favorite, but I know we are both her favorite. Now I believe her mom's her favorite. However, and I know she's watching. Yes, I do believe it's your mom. You're going to have to step up your game a little bit. But one day, she'd say, Dad, come over here. And Ken, she'd whisper in my ear. And she'd, and, oh, you got a ladybug. Oh, those are nice. Well, she would show me the ladybug, and then she'd say, Dad, you're the best. Dad, you're the best. I love you. For all those dads in the room, how does that make you feel? Pretty great. One day, I found out she had a new love in her life. And I was one of the last people to find out that she had love in her life. She told her mom. She told her friends. Apparently, it was on Facebook. Of course, you guys know me. I'm not on Facebook. I had to find out and do the research myself. 
And she said, Dad, how'd you find out? And I said, well, what did I used to do? I was a police officer. That was my job to investigate. Well, Dad, I love him. It went from loving you to loving him. And it's been about a couple years now, and I've dealt with that. I'm dealing with Sean. I'm dealing with that. But now, she's got a new love in her life. Sorry, Sean, that's how it feels. And that new love in her life looks something like this. Let's take a look. Come on, the picture should pull up here. Maybe I'll scoot closer. Yep, it's on. No picture. There we go. I went back to Texas a few weeks ago. And everybody knew about this new love in our life. Instead of being the first person to find out, I was the last person. Pastor Enrique, did you even know before me? You did, didn't you? All right, Bob, I guess you're going to have to change it for me. It's not reaching all the way from here. Oh, I know, right? And so she does one of these things. As I'm, I'm the last person, she hands me this little ball of joy. And look what he looks like. His name is Noki. You know, like the little potato Nokis that you eat, delicious. But I call him Lambert because he looks like a lamb with those ears, right? Lambert. He's all of two pounds. And I was trying to be a little bit upset, but with a face like that, you can't be, right? Here, Dad, you hold him. So I'm holding little Noki Lambert. And it was hard to be upset. But what many of you probably know, and some of you don't know, is I have three dogs now. Three dogs because I have an, a daughter who said, Dad, I'll do anything. Let's just get a dog. I'll take care of it. I'll feed it. I'll clean up after it. You won't have to do anything. This is one. Yeah, look at that picture. I mean, how can you be mad? Dad, I'll do everything. So I figured once she grew up, which she just did, she just got her first nursing job, so she's paying her own bills, I thought she would take her dogs back. <laughs> right? And that's, so that's what you would do, Right? She didn't. Instead, she gets a fourth dog. And then she says to me, Dad, you know, if I took Tazzy away, that's our first dog, she says, Tazzy just loves you, it would break her heart. I can't do that. And if I took Justice away, well, Dad, you know Justice, she can't travel. She's not a traveling dog, and I'm in Texas. And then our last dog is Buckeye. Well, Dad, you know Buckeye is Sophia's dog, so I had to get, I had to get another dog. He is pretty cute, all two pounds. I think we have a video too, Bob, right? Oh. That's actually one of my favorites. You see with his, his eye open there, he's looking at you. I mean, he fits in my hands. He's two pounds, he's little. He's a Maltese mixed with a poodle. What do you call that? A maldoodle? A malti, oh, malti, say it again? Malti poo. Okay. What kind of dog do you have? I have a malti poo. Sounds pretty impressive. Look at that. Yeah. So my children's story is this. God has blessed us with children. We love our children. What day, when God created Adam and Eve, what day were animals created? Do you remember? What's the Bible say? What do you think? Day six so far? Six, anyone else? This is an open Bible quiz. You're allowed to open your Bibles. On the sixth day, think about that. God created man and woman, woman, one, woman, 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 and God's image. 
but he also made animals on the same day that he made man. And for those that have animals, we love our animals. They're precious to us. We love our children. That's why I have four dogs. We love our children too. And God loves us so much that he brings this joy and shares it with us. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, I, I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for the blessing of children. I thank you for the blessing of animals. They are challenging, even Noki in his new life. But Lord, I thank you for what you continue to do in us, and that is to grow us for you. Lord, thank you for our children, and I pray, Lord, that each one will be in heaven with you someday very soon. In Jesus' precious name, amen. or bar your heads. Our Heavenly Father, our loving Heavenly Father, we have so much to be thankful for. As we view your creation, your handiworks, our hearts melt in praise. And as we view your plan of salvation, we bring praise to you. And as we learn more about the fact that Christ did not come to condemn the world, but came to save the world, we praise your name. As we experience your patience with us, we praise your name. As we experience your forgiveness, that's ever constant, we praise your name. And as we experience your graciousness, Father, we sing your praises. As we experience the depth of your love, how can we help but sing your praise? And as we view the glory of your character, we are so drawn and we praise your name. For those who are dealing with health issues at this time, we pray for your healing that's sufficient in your plan. For those who may be discouraged, we ask for encouragement. For our children, we ask that the Holy Spirit may inspire them and take care of them. For all of these things that we learn about you, we are drawn with cords of love. So Father, we thank thee, we praise thee. In Jesus' name, amen.
couple times this week. We tried the microphone this week, worked fine, worked like a charm. But when you get up to preach, it doesn't seem to want to work. That's all right. So this Sabbath, we brought in the Sabbath, and I was sitting in the front pew as Ella and David were playing that song, practicing last night. What a way to bring in the Sabbath. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ella. So happy Sabbath. Good to see everyone. Happy Reformation Sabbath. Do you remember that? Happy Reformation Sabbath. 503 years ago, a German monk named Martin Luther, you've probably heard of him, nailed how many theses? 95 on the wall of the church. My name is Pastor John. Myself and Pastor Enrique want to welcome you to the Shehala Seventh day Adventist Church. Whether you're watching online, like my daughter in Texas is, welcome. Or whether you're in person, we're glad that you're here. And this is a very special Sabbath. So, as we begin, though, I really want to start off with a praise. Let's start off with, a, let's go to Psalms chapter 34. It's not part of the sermon, it's just a part of praise, uplifting God. Psalms chapter 34. God's word says, I will bless the Lord at all times. That's why we're here today. I will praise, or his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's why I'm here today. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Verse 3 of chapter 34. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. That's why you're here today. I have sought the Lord, and he has heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So something that scares you today? They looked at him, and they were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of some of his troubles. No, out of all of his troubles. Verse 7, and the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Verse 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or woman that trusts in him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of life. Each person here has that same gift. It's how we choose to use that gift today. And Lord, we are here collectively to worship you. We're here to praise your name, as it says, to exalt your name, to boast in you. Lord, we pray for your protection to be around each person. Lord, I'm especially asking for the sweet Holy Spirit to be with us today, to open our minds and our hearts as we talk about some subjects that are a little bit challenging to talk about. And Lord, thank you for Martin Luther over 503 years ago on this date, nailing the 95 Thesis on the church wall because grace had already been paid. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name, and all God's people said, amen. So tonight, throughout the streets of America, millions of men, women, and children will be in disguise. 
Many will be wearing masks. Yeah, you say, well, Pastor, I'm wearing a mask right now. Yeah, you are wearing a mask, but it's going to be a different mask. They're wearing masks which cover their face, probably their whole face. Masks representing famous movie characters, heroes. I love a hero. Villains, got to have a bad guy. Witches, sort of scary. Ghosts, I don't know. Even the devil on their face. Reliving movies. I don't know if reliving is the right word. Reliving movies and events by placing their face inside a mask, disguising their identity to represent a new identity. Are you with me? Have you already fallen asleep? Millions of Americans will go door to door looking, acting, and representing someone else. You might see Jason from the horror movie Friday the 13th. Or you maybe you'll see Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street. They're two of the most popular ones right now. Walking the streets of Chehalis in the cemeteries that are now in people's front yards. Does anyone else feel like there's something wrong with this picture? What does Freddy say? Do you remember? One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Three, four, you better lock your door. Five, six, grab your crucifix. Seven, eight, I'm going to stay up late. Nine, ten, I'm never going to sleep again. Brothers and sisters, real lawlessness will be abounding in the streets of America this evening. I was a police officer almost 15 years before a pastor. One of the worst nights to work was Halloween. Some of the most heinous crimes I've ever seen happened on Halloween. Some of the robberies happened on Halloween because everyone was expected to wear a mask. Now, I know we're used to wearing masks now because we're in 2020, but it's different. Some of the darkest crimes happened on Halloween. For some, it even cost them their life on Halloween. Check the news tomorrow morning. You'll know it's true. Tonight, if you walk the streets in America, you will see graveyards everywhere, not just the regular graveyards. You'll see them on the front lawns. Which does a graveyard represent? Life or death? Death. With ghosts and goblins hanging from trees. By the way, what is a goblin? It's a scary monster. Or maybe you'll see someone wearing a mask of Chucky. You know, that cute little doll? What does that doll go around doing in the movie? It takes lives. Or maybe the scary face of Hannibal Lecter. It's all going to be out tonight. There's going to be thousands of Hannibal Lecters on the street. Remember the movie? Silence of the Lambs. Take the of out, what do you get? Silence the lamb. What does the devil want to do? Silence the lamb. Who are we here to worship today? The lamb of God. What is the name of the movie? Silence of the lamb. Hmm. Well, Pastor, that's just one movie title. Okay. What's the next movie? Same character. Hannibal Rising. Is this coincidence? Hannibal Rising. Okay, well, maybe it is coincidence. The next movie, The Red Dragon. We're going to talk about the dragon today in the Bible. I'm going to read the specific verse with you about the dragon. I often ask, like, ask people why they like to trick or treat. And the answer is pretty much the same. 
It's about the treats. Hey, I get that. I was at Costco this week, and I saw that five-pound bag of candy, and I said, if that's what it takes, we'll buy 20 of those and bring them in. If that's what brings people candy, then let's do it. You know, Pastor, I go because of the candy. Pam, you're going to have to buy more candy. Well, Pastor, you're too literal. We're just having fun, playing around. There is a great controversy, I heard, between Jason and Freddie. Both are ruthless killers. The question is, who would win if they meet each other in a fight? Who is more powerful? Who is more deadly? Trust me, brothers and sisters, this is relevant. This is spiritual. So what would you say the theme of Halloween is? Someone asked you, what would you say? What does it represent? Death. I just described to you some of the most popular costumes and their heroes are the ones who take lives of others. I'm sorry if this offends you. Maybe, just maybe, this should scare you just a little bit. What is being celebrated this evening is rehearsed already. Well, maybe you say, I celebrate it for a different reason. Well, the devil doesn't care why you celebrate it. He just cares that you celebrate it. No, maybe you missed it. He doesn't care why you celebrate it. He's just glad you celebrate it. Let's go to John 10.10. 10. I often use this verse. I use this verse all the time. Because when people say, Pastor John, tell me about the Bible. Tell me about the players of the Bible, the heroes, the villains. Tell me about, okay, there's a lot of ch chapters and Bible books in the Bible. Just bring it down, make it simple. Tell me about the Bible and how could you put it in a few sentences. And here we go, John 10.10. 10. The thief, also known as the devil, or Lucifer, or Satan, all synonymous, having different meanings, but the same person, identifies what he has come to do. And it says he's come to do what? He's come to steal, he's come to kill, and he's come to destroy. What do we see tonight? All three of those will be happening. Then we have the other person. The other character in the Bible, Jesus, and it says, I, this is Jesus speaking, I have come that they may have life. I want to give you life, Jesus said. David, I, David, Jesus says, thank you, David. It was amazing special music. You and Ella make an amazing team. But Jesus says, David and Ella, I don't want to just give you life. He says, I want to give you abundant life, more than you can even imagine. So the first great controversy started in heaven. Not between Jason and Freddie, but between an angel named Lucifer and the heavenly hosts and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For the God of the universe, the great creator, which I talked about a little bit in the children's story, who made us in his own image, was being falsely accused. Don't you hate it when you're falsely accused? We've all been falsely accused. How does it feel? You just want to defend yourself. There's a problem with false accusations, and it's this. They create doubt. Well, maybe it's true. Maybe a little bit of it's true. I don't know. Satan's going around telling all the angels that God's motives were not of true love. We don't have a choice. God's intentions were masked. God was not being real. He was being unfair, untrustworthy, and not a God of love. Let's read about it. Don't take my word. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12.
Revelation chapter 12, which means what? Revelation means the revealing of Jesus. What's the fi first five words of the book of Revelation? The revealing of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael, another name for Jesus, and his angels fought the dragon. The dragon, here's that word I told you, the dragon, who is Satan. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but they did not prevail. Praise the Lord. Nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, and the serpent of old called the devil. It identifies the dragon, the serpent of old. What's the serpent of old? We'll get to that. Keep that in the back of your box upstairs. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Satan was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Where do we live on, by the way? The earth. We're there with him. Don't forget that. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brother, which is the devil, remember we're talking about the accuser again, of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has now been cast down. Wow, it sounds a little violent up there. Some words were exchanged. And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb. I don't want to silence the lamb today. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows his time is short. On Sabbath mornings, we come up here to preach, to worship God, but also point direction. To remember who our foe is. As it says in 1 Peter 5, 8, he is a roaring lion seeking to devour us. So when you leave these doors, I want you to remember the verse I read to you in Psalms as we started. I'm going to read it again. I know you haven't memorized, but we need to hear it. Repetition for me works. Psalms 34. May the angel of the Lord encamp around all of you today. Those who fear him, and he will deliver you. I'm not worried about that roaring lion today. Sin in the Bible is described as lawlessness. 1 John 3, 4 says, Sin is the transgression of breaking the law of God, God's law of love. I, I struggled with this next statement. I really had to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Jesus. To defend sin is to excuse it. Well, I did this because they did that to me. Or I'm doing this because of that. You know, our parents always said two wrongs don't make a right. However, if you listen to yourself, and I'm one of them, to defend sin is to excuse it. Sin is the outworking of war, destruction against the great law of love, which is the foundation of God's government. Not just any government, his divine government. Let's examine the first sin in heaven and compare it with this first sin on the earth. We've examined the one in heaven where Satan did what? He accused the Father and Jesus of many things not worthy to be praised. Why can't he be lifted up? Satan be lifted up the same way. It was forced love. He made lots of accusations. In the book, Great Controversy, it says Lucifer leaving his place in the immediate presence of God. By the way, when we leave the presence of God, that's when we're vulnerable. 
Satan left the presence of God, went forth to spread the spirit of discontentment, the book says, among the angels. Lucifer questioned, why? Why should Christ have supremacy over me? Why was Christ honored above him? For even Lucifer's name means in Hebrews, Hebrew, the shining one, the light bearer. Let's first unmask the accuser. The accuser of the brethren, as it said in Revelation 12, is Satan. Let's unmask him. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Before we go to Genesis, let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Who are we dealing with? This person that was once the shining one, the light bearer, is now fallen. Verse 12 of chapter 14 of Isaiah. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Shul. That's the grave. To the lowest depths of the pit. He had an eye problem. I, 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 and I shall be like the most high. Let's keep going. Let's go now to John. John chapter 8, verse 37. I don't want this to be about what I think. I want to be about what the Bible says. We need to identify the characters of the Bible. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 37. Today's title of the sermon is, There is No Disguise, God Unmasked, Part 1. Next week, There is No Disguise, God Revealed, Part 2. Right now we're talking about the accuser of the brethren. Let me lay a little context here in John chapter 8. Jesus came down to this earth, born of a virgin, holy conception, and he is now preaching God's word. God in the flesh is on this earth, but he's under attack. He's under attack from the church, from the people. Verse 37, he's in a discussion with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and many of the witnesses. And it says, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you, Jesus says. I speak what I have seen with my father. He's sharing his witness and testimony. And you do what you have seen with your father. He calls them out. Your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. We are part of Abraham's seed. We have heaven because we're part of Abraham's seed. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Our works are very important. What we represent is very important. But you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. They said to him, we are not born of fornication. They accused Christ of being born of fornication. We have one father, and it is God. There's lots of gods out there, but that wasn't their God or the God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. 
nor have I come for myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you're not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. I mean, words are being shared here that are truthful. You are from the father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. The devil's come to steal, kill, and destroy, and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. How much truth is in the devil? No truth. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. The devil has been unmasked today. The accuser of the brethren is the devil. The accuser of Christ in heaven was the devil. The accuser of always will be the devil. So but before we accuse someone of something, we need to be careful where that comes from. If our brothers and sisters are slipping, pray for them. Don't slander them. Pray for them. Statement I heard this week was very bothersome. One of the head leaders of the Satanic Church, a Satanic Church is one that worships Satan. We're here to worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. A head leader of the Satanic Church said this, it is nice that Christian families allow their children to worship Satan one night a week on Halloween. That's not from our church. That's from the Satanic Church. They said that. One of the pivotal points in my life, I was in my 20s. I've celebrated Halloween many years when I was younger. My parents started pulling me away from it. I didn't know exactly why. We started going to church events, which were better. The candy's not that important. The costumes got a little bit scary, and I didn't quite understand why there was graveyards everywhere and everyone was trying to scare me. I didn't quite get it. But we had a speaker in the Keene Seventh-day Adventist Church where I was attending. I was in college, and he was a born-again Christian, but his prior church, he was satanic. He came from Satan's church. And he gave his testimony on Halloween, and he said this. You know, I missed a lot of Sabbaths where I was talking up top. I missed the conversation because I was talking. I didn't miss it this Sabbath. And he said this. How can Christians go to church wearing their best for God Saying, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. God is love. God loves you and so do I. Moreover, God's love is wholeness and completeness in him, which is all true, by the way. And then go out Halloween night disguising costumes representing death and devaluating the life of others. Trick or treat. Give me something good to eat as I celebrate death. He said, Christians have no idea what they're doing. And he walked us through some of the rituals they did in the church on Halloween, the sacrifices they made. Mocking Christians, or so-called Christians. You know, Mario, one of the things that really got to me in your testimony, in your daily testimony is, you said something many times, but the way I heard it is this. It took you a while to become a Christian because of the ways that Christians acted. They didn't live it. They didn't live it. I've been there. I've been the professed Christian, and I didn't live it. I didn't represent it. I didn't live for Christ the way the example would be. Let me ask you this. Would you rather me say the right things on Sabbath, or would you rather me live them? Live them. We're tired of people saying the right things and not doing the right things. The true character is what we live and what we do, and that is the fruits. We will be known by our fruits. And that first fruit that we say over and over again but never forget is love, not hate, but love. It should be real in our lives. So I wasn't willing after that date, after that sermon, to go trick-or-treating again in my life. 
It's your choice. We have a choice. I'm not looking down on you for doing it, but I'm letting you know what it represents. And I know I'm stepping on a few toes, but it's not me. I'm not stepping on your toes. I'm telling you what it really represents. To truly understand an unmasked sin, we need to examine the first sin on earth. There was a mask involved. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. My Bible is titled in Genesis chapter 3, The Temptation and Fall of Man. Now the serpent was more cunning, verse 1 of chapter 3 of Genesis, more cunning than any beast of the field, a serpent, which the Lord God had made. I told you we're going to be talking about a serpent again. And the serpent said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat? Of every tree of the garden. You see how he twists the words? Did God say you can't eat from every tree? No, God said you can't eat from one tree. And the woman said to the serpent, By the way, when you engage Satan in conversation, you're going to lose. You don't engage him. You rebuke him, and you run. Remember Joseph when he was caught in temptation? Remember Potiphar's wife came on to him? Very beautiful woman. Joseph was, was a very handsome man, but he was a worker for Potiphar. Remember that? She came on to him. What did Joseph do? He ran. If he would have gauged her in conversation, I guarantee you the story would have been different. Well, Potiphar, you know, wife, you're very beautiful, but it's not right for me to sleep with you because you're already married to Potiphar and I'm the servant in the household and he looks up to me. That wouldn't be right to do. Next thing you know, their clothes would be off and the story would be written different. He rebuked her and he ran. Think of your life, your own sins. When you rebuke the devil, Satan, get behind me. Lord, I need you right now. You've overcome that sin. But when you engage in that sin, because it's pretty inviting, trick or treat, give me something good to eat. Something good's going to come from that. Or is it? Let's keep reading. The woman said to the serpent, verse 2, we may eat from the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God said, you shall not eat from it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Was the Garden of Eden made perfect? Yes. Was Adam and Eve created sinless? Yes. Did Adam and Eve have a choice? Yes. Do you have a choice today? Yes. What I really think about, something stood out as I read this. The tree was in the midst of the garden. It wasn't on the far east side or the far west side, the far north side, the far far south side. God gave them an equal opportunity to choose from the tree of knowledge of good and evil if they so wanted to. God said you can eat from all the trees but this one. All the garden is yours. The animals, everything, the flowers, it's all yours. I love you. You're made in my image. It's all yours. Just don't eat from this one tree and don't even go near it. I'm going to say this word. You're going to die if you do, and you don't understand what that means, but it means it's a terrible thing. You don't want it. Just trust me. Verse 4, the serpent said to the woman, Now, if he would have shown up as the devil, it's the devil. Eat of it. She probably would have ran, rebuked him, and never eaten from it. The devil's not coming as he is. Do you get it? He's not going to show up and scare us. He might tonight a little bit, but that's not the way he works. And someday soon he's going to come again. I'm not talking about God here. He's coming again too. But the devil's going to show up as an angel of light. And if we don't know Jesus... We're going to buy into it. He showed up as a serpent, a beautiful serpent that could fly, a talking serpent. 
He is engaging. He is intriguing. But he leads to death. Surely, he will not die. Doubt. Sin is starting to build up a little bit. Well, maybe God's wrong. Maybe I can be like God. Maybe I can have that eye problem too. Maybe I can be worshipped. Maybe it's about me. It's what I want to do. I hear that today. I want it my way. It's what I want to do. What did God ask him to do? Stay away from it. So the woman saw the tree, verse 6. It was good for food. It was pleasant to the eye. Sure it was. And the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took of the fruit. She ate it. You know, when you sin, it's always nice to bring someone along. She ate it. She also gave it to her husband. I'll give Eve this. She was deceived. Adam openly walked into it. He chose it. She was deceived. With her, and they ate it together. Their eyes were opened. There was some truth to that. Their eyes were opened. And they knew that they were naked. Wow. Naked is a vulnerableness, is it not? When we look at Luke 15 and the prodigal son who walked away from the father, which represents God, and he walked away from the father, the very first thing the father did after he kissed him when the son came back, the father kissed him and hugged him and welcomed him back. But God gave him his robe of righteousness. They had sold the robe for this apple. Well, it doesn't say apple. It says a fruit. We like to say apple. But for this fruit, they were naked. Verse 8, And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden on the cool of the day. And they ran to the Lord. Lord, it's good to see you. How have you been? Where have you been today? No, they hid from him. The presence of the Lord among the trees in the garden. And the Lord called Adam, Adam and Eve, where are you? I heard your voice in the garden, Lord. I was afraid because I was naked. I hid myself. Verse 11, and God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? I commanded you that you should not eat. Sin really became real when the first family, Cain, killed Abel. Who found him? There's no other people to find him. Adam and Eve are the only ones there. Who found the body of Abel? We know they did. And they knew they brought sin into this world. What would you say the theme of Halloween is? Death. Scared to death, maybe another one. For what? A piece of candy. Halloween is like a horror movie being reenacted. And we celebrate it. And we put the heroes of these villains on our face. And we walk around. And we say trick or treat. On doors of people we don't know. Brothers and sisters, I don't have a problem with the costume party. We've had many costume parties. I have a problem celebrating the devil's holiday. That's the problem that I have. It's not even my problem. It's nothing personal. It's God's problem. Adam and Eve did sin. They were deceived by the devil who was in disguise as a wise, cunning serpent. Ultimately, that sin led to death. And the death was the first murder in the family of Cain. Satan always tries to tell us that the grass is greener on the other side. 
of the fence. It's greener over there. Just try it. At times, the grass may even appear greener on the other side of the fence. But what Satan doesn't tell you is this. Underneath that green grass is a septic tank full of all his rotten lies that ultimately lead to death when I buy into them. He's come to steal. He's come to kill and destroy John Mutchler's family. And he's coming for yours too. I'm not worried. I've said a prayer over you. We've asked for the angel of the Lord to be camped around us. But we need to know what we are celebrating And let me ask you this. Do we realize today is 503 years, October 31st of the Reformation? In 1517, 503 years ago, Martin Luther nailed the 95 Thesis on the door of All Saints Church in Wittenberg. Are we celebrating that? Luther was protesting. Praise God, somebody stood up and protested because everybody else was going along with it. There are times to protest, but make sure it's for the right reasons. Against the sale of indulgences. Well, you know what? God's died for us already. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to go to the pastor. You can go strictly to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been paid for. This day in history represents the onset of the Great Reformation in the history history of the Christian church, which we are a part of. I wonder, will there be any celebrations tonight at your household over this event? There should be. I wonder, will there be any costumes tonight walking around on the streets of Chehalis of the German monk Martin Luther? And if so, would any Christian even recognize the costume of Martin Luther and his 95 Thesis? Or have we forgotten? Because when I googled the most popular mass out there, his name didn't come up. When I look on my calendar on my phone, all the different holidays for today, and every calendar said Halloween, 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 Halloween. Who are we listening to today? Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is coming very soon. As it says in Revelation, the devil knows his time is short. Just as he is king of kings, Satan is the king of lies and will be forever removed. The truth, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He has been unmasked today. But it starts today in knowing Jesus and as Christians representing Jesus. Not only in our words, but our actions and our representations. Here's a thought provoking question Do you think there will be Halloween in heaven? You laugh, do you? I imagine more than half, I don't know the statistics, but more than half the Christians will celebrate Halloween. So why isn't it going to be in heaven? And if you don't think it's going to be in heaven, and it won't be celebrated in heaven, then why are we celebrating it now? Because there won't be any death in heaven. There won't be any dying in heaven. And the only ghost in heaven will be the Holy Ghost. In the Bible, Jesus tells the people, his people will be identified. They won't be wearing a mask. They won't be disguised. And how will we be identified? Jesus says, they will know you. You, 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 you. They will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. John 13, 35. It came out in the Sabbath school class this morning. Jesus proclaimed, they will know you by your love. We are known not only by what we say, but by our actions. Next week, part two, there is no disguise. God revealed. You're going to hear a lot about love. I want to give you just a small taste of that. 
of next week if you come. But it's your choice. God's not going to force you, and neither am I. For the Bible says, taste mm, and see that the Lord, he is good. May God bless the reading of his word today, and may he address, direct our steps according to his word. There is no disguise, for God is love.